Uh, so welcome to Document Management's role in a digitally connected FM organization. My name is Ariane. I've worked for the University of Colorado Boulder for about 15 years, well, a little over 15 years. I'm the process analyst uh, for that group. Uh, so I facilitate business processes and uh, then that work with technology and back and forth like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Lorena Griffin, and I'm the Facilities Information Services Manager at Michigan State University. I've been there 32 years in uh, several different roles. I'm Kendra Schrader. I'm the Document Management Administrator at Michigan State University, and I've been there for 21 years. So um, we're going to do a, a demonstration of how workers in the field can quickly access information at their fingertips. And at the end of our presentation today, we're going to do a recap of that demonstration, slow down and, and dissect that. So please sit back and enjoy Some Don't Like It Hot, starring <laughs> Lorena Griffin as Susie Supervisor and Kendra Schrader as Betty Boots on the Ground. Side. Escape and get to the Zoom meeting. Little. Take some. All right. Betty. We have AppTree. I'm going to use AppTree and I'm going to click into our facilities information tool. Yeah, let me point at things, right? And then I'm going to click on buildings because Susie asked me to go to the law building, which I'm not familiar with. And so I'm going to type law in up here to find out what the actual name of this building is. Yep, there it is, MSU College of Law. And I'm going to go to the asset map because I want to see where this piece of equipment is in the building so that I can get to it. So now it's going to skip because you could totally see my login information in a second. Fancy editing. OK. Um, so this assets map is going to take me directly to the building. And now I can do some smart filtering on the side. I'm pretty sure that this piece of equipment is in the basement, she said. And I don't know what I'm doing now. OK, basement. <laughs> and then um, I can type in a keyword, she said, supply fan. So I'm going to type in the word supply. And then it's going to hopefully filter even further and show me um, Yep, there's the supply fans in the basement. So now I can click on, I can't remember if I fat fingered it. I think I did, hang on. All right, so I'm not sure which fan it is, but I'm gonna click. And when I click anywhere in here, I can see some information about the building. And then I had to get closer to click on the dot. Um, and so now I'm clicking on Supply Fan 2. I can see a little more information about that piece of equipment. Um, and then I go and I click, and there is, I don't know if you can see it, that says Asset Viewer. And here's some more information about this fan that I can get before I get out to the building. Maybe I needed a ladder or something. This would tell me what I need to take to get out there and pull some attributes. And here it's pulling some documents so I can look up some photos of these, of the piece of equipment that I'm looking for. And I can also open up some documents and see. So now here is the test and balance report. I can get the information I need about this fan. There's all the info I need. OK, so now I'm going to close this out, and then I'm going to the building. Hang on. Now I'm at the building. <laughs> Wasn't that great? <laughs> Fan that's not running. So now I'm scanning the barcode with my mobile device. And I am at that piece of equipment. I have scanned the barcode. And now I can see any work orders that have been done, any information I need about this fan that I might need to order parts or do something. And then 
I can also, I don't know why I scanned it again, but I'm scanning the barcode and now I can get it to work. And now I can hit search up here after the barcode enters there. And now I'm searching our document management system, Meridian, and pulling the documents while I'm out in the field. There's more information that we have in our document management system. And I can click on the PDF of the O&M and get the information I need to order the part to fix the fan. Okay. So that was real handy. And in the field, saved me a ton of time. And now I'm going to fix the fan because it's hot in here. Yep. It's, um, I don't like it hot. Anyway, um, so I, we weirdly got through that. I'm sorry. I apologize. I couldn't be live. If you'd have been in our hotel room earlier, it was live. OK, so anyway. <laughs> All right, so that was the quick way to show you guys how easy it is for somebody to get to the information in the field. I'm sorry, what? How did you order the part? How, you know what? I'm that good. <laughs> um, you, if, if you can order, um, like, and we didn't show that because that's not what we do, but um, the work order information is there and they can get parts from our um, stock room inventory. Yep. It's what? Oh, yeah. How do I do it from here? How do I start this slideshow? Why is it not like? Uh, Why is it total technology fail today? <laughs> there you, you go. Could potentially that way. Let's see if it's going to work. There you go. Okay. 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 So, so you just saw all of that and all that information that Betty Boots on the Ground could get to real quickly. So, how do you get there? So. One of the things that you have to think about is all of that information is in a whole bunch of different systems. And so thinking about that as a whole overall holistic knowledge management and thinking about all the pieces where all the information is, like in your project management, in your, in your document management, in space management, in your spatial data, GIS, um, pulling all those things together, the resources, like how are, where are you getting that information from? How many resources of people do you need to manage that information? And then, of course, consider the integrations that are already happening. So, so then um, what's document management's role in that overall knowledge management? So we wanted to break that down, and we looked up the definition for document management, and they talk about the system, the software. How do you manage your documents within software? But it's actually so much more than just the software. The software is a big piece to it, but there's a lot more involved in, in managing. So think about it as a document management program. And all of these pieces need to be there and in place. So for instance, processes and procedures. You need to have processes and procedures. We, over the last several, several years, interjected ourselves into processes and procedures or created new ones. We have several, though too many to mention, but that's what helps us keep data aligned and correct. And you have to have that to be able to get to the place where we can give Betty all of her information. Training on, on your software, your systems, put in place a change management program. So if you change your software, you change anything about that, you're updating your training manuals, you're communicating to your user group, that's all a part of it. Um, there's several different resources, like the resource that I talked about, your document creators, the people who search, scan, add stuff um, to your system your document management system administrator, your IT support, your vendor support. I mean, there's just so many different resources that you have to keep managed in your document management program, not to mention all the equipment that you have, funding that you have to have in place, and then your software scanning, consider your integrations and any of your homegrown applications that you have. Show piece. So <laughs> as you're considering putting together your document management program, the one thing 
that you have to consider is, um, it, you know, when you're implementing a document management system or a solution and uh, uh, you have to consider your stakeholders. You have to first determine your business need and then who those stakeholders would be. So from a document management perspective, there are several stakeholders on the facilities management operation side. You've got administration and management. You also have that on the campus side overall. Uh, CAD, GIS, planning, project delivery, asset management, maintenance, uh, IT, accounting, health and safety, public safety, wayfinding, space management, and you could probably think of five, 10, or 20 more stakeholders in that. Um, the stakeholders will help reinforce the use of any system that you choose by reiterating the business need. And um, they ask themselves, you know, what, what, what's in it for me? How, what am I gonna get out of this system? So that's a pretty normal question. So you have to be able to work with your stakeholders to um, make sure that they understand how the system is going to positively affect their ability to do their job and meet their own business needs. So creating processes is uh, determined. You, you first ask, okay, so who's going to own which processes when you're putting together a document management program? And building a, a business process is a key part of system implementation because, um, because it's not just document management. Uh, you have to consider that uh, um, you're establishing a single source of truth. So all of those systems that you saw that were working together, they're coming together and creating a single source of truth through document management. Um, and then it's, you know, documenting and communicating processes, as Lorena pointed out earlier, that's a giant part of putting together your document management program. You have to bring your stakeholders along for the ride or it will not work well. <laughs> okay, so in creating your document management program, you also need to think about system integration. So what systems do you already have in place that you can uh, leverage information from and what systems can accept information from your document management system. So if you think about that single source of truth that we just talked about, um, you don't want four different systems that do the same thing or have their own variation of the information in them. You want one system that is the source of truth for your building number and then the other systems can use that information. So, so really thinking about what information you can push and then pull in is important holistically to make sure. So we do that, for example, with um, GIS on the map. You saw the floor plan. Well, that's coming from our document management system. But the room numbers, building number, building name, that information is coming from our IWMS system. So all of these are working together and feeding information to each other. And then there's one place that holds the truth. Um, another important part is access. Who's going to get access to this information? Who needs this information all the time? Who needs it one off? And how do you handle that? So um, internal versus external staff on a campus, especially, you know, the facilities, maintenance, planning, design, construction, all of those folks we give access to because that's their job. They need this information constantly. They live and breathe it. That's how they get things done. External staff, like professors, students asking for information, maybe facilities managers, um, health and safety, police, you know, first responders, all of them have a different need to get to the information. Some need one thing ever, and the others also need access to the floor plans all the time to find their way around the building. So. Um, to think about that, and then we worked very closely a few years ago with our public safety department and the police to come up with a critical data policy, and that has different access, uh, what was it, levels of access. And so based on who you are, what you want the information for, what are you going to do with it, what is your job, do you work on campus, are you an external vendor? All of these things are considered and then we either give you that piece of information 
or we give you an account to get into our system based on your needs. So um, that's how we handle that. Okay. All right. So I'd like you all to welcome back to the stage. I'm sure they want to. <laughs> <laughs> Susie's supervisor and Betty Boots on the ground. We are going to take a look at Some Don't Like It Hot for a second time. And we're going to talk about, um, we're, going to, we're going to slow it down. We're going to talk about the marriage between a document management system and other digitally connected systems. So take it away. Okay. So now it's going to be weird again because I have to use the video. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be pausing this probably a lot because I, it's the same video, so it's going to go fast. I was hoping to just what is it rated? talk through it. What's it rated? <laughs> yeah. What's it rated? R. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's going to cover your ears. It's going to be R. <laughs> All right. So same thing. So down here, before I even click into it, this is AppTree. Um, this is, we use Famous for our IWMS system, so their mobile platform um, is AppTree, and then we use Meridian for our document management system, and they also have the access using AppTree. So we embedded them, Mo Meridian, inside of the Famous instance, so users had an easier time. They could just log into one and have access to everything. So that's the first thing that I click on. And I skipped all the way to the middle somehow. See? I didn't lie. I haven't used a computer. <laughs> okay. So I click on AppTree. And then right away, I go to um, the side menu over here. You want to, like, I don't know how this will work. <laughs> you, you do my arms. Um, push the button in the middle. Okay. So on the side menu, we have Search Meridian, like I just talked about, embedded in there. Yep. And then there's um, the map. You can go straight to the map, or you can go to this Fit Tool, which is a homegrown application that we've put together. It's called the Facilities Information Tool, but everybody calls it the Fit Tool. And if you go to the Fit Tool, you land. It's redundant to say that Fit Tool. <laughs> um, you land on this page that's really messy. There's a lot of links, there's a lot of stuff going on, but that's just because we do a lot of stuff. <laughs> and this is used all across campus for yep. people to get into the facility information. Yep, and this part's public. Anything that has a little padlock by it, you need an account that I talked about for. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can see, yeah, there's just a lot of information going on. Most of it is kind of circular references, so you can kind of get to the same information from anywhere in here, just depending on how you want to go at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then Betty clicked on buildings right away. Um, when Susie said law, that's not the name of the building, but we have it in here so that you can um, click, you can do part of the building name, number, aliases, because the buildings don't always keep the same name, right? So we track all of that, address, anything. You can type in here and get to a list of anything that has that information in it. And then when she clicked on the building name, this drop down list came up. And um, details and additions, that information comes out of our IWMS system. Um, so you can see, you know, year built, raised, if it was a raised building, architect, square footage, address, anything like that. Additions, show you each addition, the architect, the square footage of it, all that information is listed there. Projects, we have a homegrown. Um, database we call the records project database. Um, it is a culmination of all the historical projects since the university began. Um, any system that we used previous to the one we are on now, you know, if you switch systems, you lose that old information sometimes. So we have this records project database that has every legacy project, previous system projects, projects from our current IWMS system anything all in one spot. So that's our truth for projects. And then the mapping stuff. And then at the bottom, those links take you directly into our web-based version of our document management system. Um, so you can get to a lot of information or 
filtered right down. And from this screen, you're going at it from the building, maybe on a different link from the home page, you would just go to the whole system and filter from there. So anyway, okay, so Betty goes to the asset map because she wants to see the assets. And then she painfully logs in again. Somehow my keyboard split on my iPad and it was the most frustrating thing <laughs> to use. I couldn't figure it out. I fixed it today, thank God. I know, so yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so now this asset map has filtered right down to the building that I searched for and the orange color right now on our asset map, we're going through an effort um, to do facility condition assessments in all of our buildings. And we have, you could probably talk about this yeah. better. Well, and it not only includes the assessment for, for the building, but it includes picking up any assets that are out there that we track, mapping those, barcoding those, and then linking the equipment ID in our document management system to that piece of equipment and then linking the documents. So it's a huge effort that our organization. Um, well, no. I mean, <laughs> no. So as we go through this, you'll see, that's why we're saying there's so much information in all the different places. We want to give that information to people that need it, but there's all this background work that you have to do to get to that point. So these, you know, the building footprints on the map and then, and then all these little, so orange means this building's being worked on right now and the assets are being linked. And so there'll be more information in this building than say a different building that wasn't the orange color. Yeah. Green means all the way done and we have <laughs> one all the way done. Yeah. And how long does that stay all the way done? You know, right. as soon as so you have to keep, there. you have to put something in place, a process in place to keep up that information too. So then all these so purple dots yeah, are tracked assets in the building that some, our mapper goes out and in, I think collector or something, mm -hmm. puts the dots there and puts the barcode on. Um, and then this information over here, these filters, are coming from the IWMS system. So you've got, you know, your building information, floor information, room coming from that part. And then you've got all of your equipment and asset information coming from the asset module. Okay, so Betty starts filtering again. Maybe this is the part where I don't know what I was doing. Okay, <laughs> basement. So now you can see, you know, the room number information popped in there. There's, you know, color codes for the different rooms, you know, the pinkish colors, you know, mechanical, electrical areas. Um, and now it pulled up that location from the mapper that they put that there were tracked assets there. And I think that you said that, but um, the floor plans are all kept in Meridian. And we consider that the single source of truth for our operational CAD floor plans, and GIS pulls it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then this information that you're seeing, these are more attributes from the IWMS system, mm -hmm. um, asset number and all that. And then I didn't click on it in the demonstration, but when I get down to those three little dots, oh wait, <laughs> Thing. Three little dots. You can actually pull up, you know, an attribute table that will give you all the information for the assets in that building that can be filtered or sent out um, to a CSV file. So imagine you can give that information if a consultant needs it or somebody needs to go out in the field and fix something or anything you can do with the information. Um, so then these are just more attributes pulling from the famous asset module about that supply van, mm -hmm. a couple tabs of that. And then there's the document tab and this information is pulling from, the top ones here are coming from the document management system, so from Meridian. And then these attachments down here, um, I'm not sure if they're putting those right into they're Famous. Into the map. Right, okay, so right into the map. Mm -hmm. So any, um, person that goes out there, the, so our mapper, is uploading the images of the actual. So 
equipment. When I say in the map, it's in our GIS system, MUNSIS, they're keep, they're, that information is going there. Mm -hmm. So, oh, <laughs> really interesting photos again. Mm -hmm. In the live version, there was a new photo of my little fan. But, you know. <laughs> The real, yeah. That's right. Okay, so these are just old. This looks like it might have come from microfilm, maybe, and been digitized and put into our document management system. It's just like watching paint dry, I feel like I'm. Okay, so now back to Aptury, and this is the part where. Um, I could go in and I did equipment search first. And so this is famous IWMS, and this is all that information that we saw on the side of the map. These are those fields you can search again. So again, it's all a lot of circular information. It's the same information, just different ways to get at it, whatever people prefer, whatever's easiest, whatever's fastest. But it's all, you know, one place where this information is. Well, lots of places, but one version of it that's all working together. Mm -hmm. So here's that same information, but now they have access to the work order information to see past information about what's gone on with this asset. And then, um, I must have clicked on Search Meridian. I don't know why it didn't show. Mm -hmm. But again, scanning this barcode, and now, and within those other parts of this app tree app, that it kind of all looks the same, there's always a search meridian at the top. So whether you're in the equipment, the work order screen, somewhere else within after you can always search the documents as well and get right into our document management system part. So here's this information is from our document management system, but also had a little bit of information coming from the asset table with the equipment number, whether it's in use or not, if it's removed, um, that kind of information. So here's the operation and maintenance manual to get you and tell I'm not a maintenance person. I didn't know what I was supposed to zoom in on. <laughs> right? right. Um, yep, and this is just opening up on their iPad or phone or whatever they have with them. So that, I think that, that was all the... Things. And we didn't really talk about a lot, I didn't mention it, but um, project management system plays into this too. So we have unifiers, that, that's our single source of truth for documents, current documents. We know they're approved, we know they've been through the workflow, people have seen them. So those are the ones that we add to our document management system so people can, and hard copies and things still, but those are the ones that we know people need to get their hands on. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's basically it, other than the last, now, and the last piece to this. To to <clears throat> that's okay. We'll right, just talk that. through it. But, okay, so a couple of big things to remember is that it, there's a lot of data and information, but you need to pick a single source of truth for that piece of information, and then you can integrate that in other systems so you know that this information is accurate here. You can pull it in and out of other systems, but that's very important. And then to think of your document management, not just a piece of software, it, if you have to pick a good piece of software, but to make sure that you think about that and have a document management overall program, and then think about that document management program being a big piece to your overall knowledge management for your facilities information. That's what you need to leave here with. <laughs> And any questions? Okay. Yeah, what? Um, so my first question or when you were talking about raised building. Yep. So, but that actually leads to another question. How are your, how are they indexed or what's the identifier or the index for your buildings? Do the raised buildings live in a separate table no. or are they... They live in the same. So like for us, a building has a lot of different statuses. Okay. So it could start with planning. It could go right into being active because we actually create buildings if we have people in the buildings, but we didn't actually build them. So we have a lot of different, so it's just a status and famous, but that building number 
is a unique identifier that we use in all the systems. So like in GIS, if we wanted to show raised buildings over 20 years, we could do that. So we just, yeah, they're just in the list and then the status. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once a building, always a building. Once a building, always a building. Don't Names change. may change. No, Names do change several, several times. And but even if you sell property, if the building's on a piece of property, it goes away. Yeah. Does it say that? Say that again. So if property is sold with a building on it, does that building still stay? Yes, because we have information about it. So we might have documents that are associated to that. So it just becomes a different status in our system. And that is something. And these that just reminds me of I mentioned these aliases. In document management, so you have this static piece of paper that might say home management because that's what it was called when they built it. So that's what's on all the drawings and all the documents and all the everything. Well, if somebody pulls one up that says home management and, they, and we didn't have this, they might not know that that is really pollution. It's really easy for people to think you made a lot of mistakes when you put your information in when they see these data changes, but it's not really clear to them. So this tool that we've created alleviates a lot of that because people can find what they're looking for. Introduce yourself and then... <laughs> Tell us a fun fact about you. Know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. It's exactly the same. Yes. Yes. There is. We have had Unifier as long as we've had Meridian, and our implementation of Unifier did not go. Like we would have liked like it we too. We would have liked it too. So the, the integration there for moving documents is completely manual. We have like a team of mm. students and that's all they do yep. all day. Yep. That's all they do. <laughs> Ariane <laughs> can <laughs> speak differently. But, yeah. Go. Yeah. We, uh, we are also going to be using Unifier, hoping to go live in October. And one of the requirements that we had was that there was an interface between Unifier and Meridian because we don't want to have a whole bunch of students in our basements <laughs> scanning documents like, oh, well, you know, sometimes. Um, and we don't want our staff to have to do the same work twice. So there will be an interface between the two. And I'll say that because those two were implemented at the same time, we we just put processes in place. If, if we can't get the integration in software, then we put a process in place. It's more manual, but we have that. So, yeah, I guess, uh, go ahead. Um, how does like a BIM execution plan play into this? Like, do you have a BIM execution plan? We don't you? have that just yet. We've talked about that a lot, but we, we're getting like Revit drawings when we're building new. Um, we're getting that, but for us, our campus is so large, we'd have to go back and get all of that, and you know, it takes resources, it takes people, so that's in the back of our mind to go there someday, but we're not there just yet. Um, gentlemen. Hi, Hi. yeah, Peter Velasco, UNT. Um, with Unifier and your project documents, you have contracts, POs, all, all that kind of mm -hmm. information, you said you work with other enterprise constituents, you know, that information, What's the single source of truth for those business and contract and legal documents? Mm -hmm. It looks like your system has, that, you know, Meridian has enough, a wealth of that information. Yeah. Or, yes. Or will. Mm -hmm. Are you, is, is facilities considered that authoritative mm -hmm. source for everything related to that project? Yes. No, we, so we insert ourselves into processes. If another department creates a document or does whatever, we'll insert ourselves or help them create a process to get that information to us. So there are some, peop there are some uh, departments within our organization, a, pro a smaller project area that actually does a few projects and creates changes in data. So they give that to us hard copy today. It's just little folders, they, but we put a process in place, close out for them to give that to us. If the project goes, is a bigger project, goes through our project management unifier, we 
have created a way to, when that business process ends, not the whole project, but that business process, we then, we know that's a task for us to go process that document, take it out and put it in Meridian. Mm -hmm. And for us, Meridian is always going to be that single source of truth so for a project. Enterprise-wide. So uh, just our campus. The, yes. The yep. Records, the deeds, the, yep. Yes. So that, all, yeah, yes. everybody would come to us for that, but we mm -hmm. have to get that information so from campus all uh, over. Yeah. Kind of. For we facilities have, for information, facilities. but yeah. not all. The, you know, we have a central. Yeah. yeah. Not that. We have but. A university archives that handles the other stuff, but we do all the facility and infrastructure are you, are data. You So we do, we do ours slightly differently than Michigan State does. Um, so we have projects and those projects, um, the people that are working on the projects are putting the documents into our document management system as they're working through the projects. So we don't have a team like Michigan State does, it's just our philosophy is document management is everybody's job. So um, we do it a little differently, but the end result is actually the same. It is. Yeah, it's the source of truth. But yeah, we do. We have a really extensive archiving process going on, and we have it really locked down and don't let anybody <laughs> pretty much but our staff add to that because it has to be in a certain format, the government standard, PDFA, OCR, like the whole spiel. Um, and so the rest of them have another area where they can add their living, breathing, operational files, work on those, do those. But we don't know that that's the final version of that. We don't know that you started it here and then saved it on your desktop or did something else. So that's why we pull the project information from Unifier or from closeout folders from other departments. It would be worth mentioning that those living, breathing documents also live in the same system. They just have yeah. a different form. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. They're all in my... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the official PDFA archive version. Yeah. I don't know what you mean by general counsel, but when we have an issue, legal counsel can have access to our document management system, so they are also getting their information from one place, the same place. Sure. Stephen. Um, when uh, you, were, you said you were pulling data from the written and you were looking in your map, you were, can I look at multiple formats? Is that just an image of the document? Or like if you have, is it falling over CAD files as is, so you can see them in, okay, so those were, the, were those AutoCAD? So the, so the floor plans, is that what you're talking about that was on the, the base layer of the map? They're actually, the GIS um, group is actually exporting out the data and then importing it into their system. However, I mm -hmm. yeah, please good. No, it's not it's a not copy. Source it's of truth, but right. Automation behind the scenes that's feeding that source of truth into other ways yeah. to visualize. So you can it's access like that. that. Yeah. So yes. if that were updated. Right. Right. Well, I can't. Well, that pro that. Is, no human is doing anything. So as soon as one's updated in Meridian, it's automated and updates on the map. So nobody's actually like saving a version yeah. on their computer and then having to upload it and keep up with it. It's just ha it just happens. Yeah. Continue my previous question. So you said that uh, you, let's say you automatically copy a document from Unifier to Meridian, mm -hmm. uh, but you said that the unique identifiers are created within your system, right? During the project, obviously, the builders don't know your unique identifiers, so they obviously don't assign unique IDs to the documents. For the assets, you mean? Yes. Yeah. So how do you manually later then assign to each document those unique IDs? 
well, we have a process in place right now. <laughs> and that big process is a little, it's manual right now, but we call it facility asset data exchange. And so if we can get that information ahead of time, um, and we know that this piece of equipment is, has this equi equipment ID associated to that, then we have a place in this big Excel for putting the record from our project management in there so it associates it to this, the document and the equipment ID, and so it's manual right now, but at least we know so we can match those up to link those documents. So we're making the consultants at the beginning of a project fill out what equipment they're going to remove and install, and then immediately our preventive maintenance team gets that information and creates those unique identifiers, mm -hmm. so then the contractor has those numbers to put on the actual submittals and then we link those to the documents that we take out when we add that file to Meridian. It's pulling from um, famous, the asset table information, and we just use the number and it populates all the information about it. If they update that information in famous in any way, it syncs and updates the metadata on our documents. So. Yeah. We're operating much the same way in that since I stole from them, just saying. So we might be close to time. Don't want to keep you over, but, but if you guys, any more questions, we're here. You can find us. Yes. Okay, okay. It's about cool. how you guys are tracking your assets. Are you using collector? Are you using survey one, two, three? How, how are you guys going and physically going about so our GIS created this great like application to use for the what, what we're calling the mappers. So yes, collectors part of that, and they use that when they go out in the field and map where those assets are. And so you feel that the location is pretty accurate. Oh yes, building? because we hired a full-time mapper, and now we're going to hire another one to do that because we're going to go through this big facility condition assessment for all of our buildings. It's going to be in the next three or four years, and in conjunction with that, when we do one building, we're going to get all the data, all the information. Then we're putting in place what we call a process for steady state. So if after we've done that building, we do a new project, we've got enough resources to keep up on that data. So that's what we're doing right now. So it's huge. Basically, you're putting a point in the polygon, and that asset is in that room, but it's not specifically on this wall, or are you attaching it to that wall? I think it's I would like to really know. accurately, I, like... Like a sorry. GIS pinpoint is what they're yeah. doing. You know? Well, yes, yeah. it's accurate. Okay. Yep. Yeah. A point on the map. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty accurate. Are, are you here to what? kick us out? We have about 24 million square feet, almost 600 buildings. One of these ladies probably won't brag on themselves, but I'm going to brag on them. One of the things that I, that's so neat about what both of these universities, Colorado and Michigan State, does is especially Michigan State's huge, and Colorado's big too, but Michigan State's like humongous. And they really do a good job of fighting off what they can chew. And that doesn't necessarily come across in what they're showing here because they got a lot of work to do with this facility condition assessment, but they have done so much analysis ahead of time about how much work it takes to get it where it needs to be mm -hmm. and how much work it takes to keep it once it gets mm -hmm. there. So they don't go in these things wishful thinking. They mm -hmm. go in these things knowing mm -hmm. what it's going to take mm -hmm. to do it, mm -hmm. and, then they, and then they make it happen. Mm -hmm. And they make it where it's scalable, where it's actually maintainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These demos are so misleading so often because you can go pick a building and do cool stuff with it, but can you do it in 26 million square feet mm -hmm. for the next 25 it's years? It's huge. <laughs> and, it, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that, that is one of the, well, that is one of the exactly. things we yeah. probably should have addressed in our slide is that, and one of our slides anyway, is that it's an investment. You have to invest resources mm -hmm. to maintain your data, yep. your documents, because mm -hmm. if your data doesn't match up with your documents, you lose not only the single source of truth, but you lose the trust of your stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And that is hard to get back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I, we, we'll, we'll revise the slide for another right. presentation <laughs> and then. Um, and to piggyback on to that, relationships too, because we work in a department, planning, design, construction. We don't work with the facilities maintenance 
side of the house. We don't work with our land management group that can do everything on, we have a lot of farms. They handle all the farmland. We have interior design on campus that can also install and change things. We have the housing group who can also go out and swap out equipment. So to build relationships with all these people and give them a return on their investment, give us your documents and we'll give you access to all of this and they love it and so they do. But without that, we just only have the documents that planning design construction does. So where would that get us, especially with the asset stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, they install, but they're not the ones out there fixing them, changing them out, you know, doing all of that work. So that part's super important too. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thanks.